the topic of the presentation is processing geospatial data at scale uh, with Python and Apache Sedona. Um, all code uh, examples used uh, in that uh, in this presentation uh, you can find on my GitHub using the link uh, uh, posted below. A notebook to use in the uh, practice section is also uploaded there. Uh, only one thing which you need is uh, Docker installed on, mar your, on your machine because I'm using uh, a Docker Compose uh, in the notebook uh, section later on. Um, the solution was tested on the Linux and Ubuntu, uh, uh, on the Linux with Ubuntu uh, machine and uh, also on Mac uh, uh, OS. Uh, a little uh, a brief introduction. Uh, nowadays, the, the amount of geospatial uh, data um, grows tremendously. We use machine learning algorithms to gather data about the location from uh, satellite or aerial images. Uh, we also collect the data from mobile phones, uh, IoT devices. Uh, also, OpenStreetMap project uh, provides us with reliable data about features such as uh, buildings, roads, railways, and others. Um, also, many companies build their, uh, their uh, own products based on the geospatial uh, data. Uh, but what actually we can do with geospatial data, we can answer many location-based problems, such as uh, how to find the location of my dream house, uh, where is the taxi driver, and how uh, long should I wait for him, uh, how to choose best location of new facility to increase, uh, to increase the revenue. Uh, we recently faced uh, with the COVID-19 pa pandemic, we still uh, we can use uh, location data gathered from mobile phones to, to lower the spread of disease. Uh, the pandemic poses unprecedented challenges for governments and uh, societies around the world. Uh, the situation showed that non-pharmaceutical intervention uh, helps to delay COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and with the help of the data-driven approach, uh, we can support uh, public health actions across early middle and late stage phases of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we can also, with use of geospatial data, optimize delivery times, for example, for, for packages, uh, and predict environmental uh, disasters based on the gathered uh, data. Um, today, uh, in this talk, I'm focusing on the vector data and uh, Apache Sedona Python API. Uh, we can represent geometric objects based on the three basic data types, such as point, line, and polygon. Of course, we have uh, uh, much more of them, like multi-point, multi-polygon, or geometric collection. Um, in case of geospatial data, we try to verify the relation between them. If the line intersects with polygon, uh, or if uh, our location lies within some area, and so on. Uh, geospatial relation is important when we talk about the, the special join. Uh, so let's write and uh, discuss the special join from scratch uh, in a simplified manner using uh, Apache Spark Python API. Uh, so assume that we have um, the location of people uh, and our goal is to find others uh, within uh, 150 meters. A radius. Uh, first of all, uh, we can create buffers surrounding our point. Uh, for uh, each point, uh, we verify if the uh, if the point is inside uh, the buffer created based on the given radius. Um, first point in our case is outside the buffer. Next one uh, is uh, first first one was inside the buffer. The next one is uh, outside. Uh, uh, the, the, the buffer, the next one is also outside, uh, uh, other one also, and the two remaining one also. Um, to find a solution for every point, procedure has to be repeated. Uh, previously shown examples can be represented using a Spark data frame. Uh, our data frame has three columns. First is the ID of the person, second X coordinate, and the last one is uh, Y coordinate. Um, in that example, let's assume that we have a local coordinate system and a unit of measure is meter. Um, the starting point of our coordinate reference system is point zero, uh, zero. Um, With this assumption, particularly we can describe the solution using the simple UTF uh, user-defined functions that takes uh, uh, pairs of coordinates representing two compared points. Uh, UTF returns distance, which is treated as a joint condition. 
Uh, solution looks very simple. We use uh, Pythagoras, Pythagoras uh, uh, formula to find the distance. Uh, and the uh, result of the function is used to the uh, joint uh, condition. A uh, physical plan looks like below, scan filters. Uh, we have also uh, projects, so nothing to worry about, but what's wrong with this approach? Uh, first of all, we create a Cartesian product, um, which can lead to huge memory consumption. Uh, the number of comparison grows dramatically when the input data also increases. Um, we perform many additional computation, um, even if points are even if points are far away uh, from each other, uh, and do not have a chance to meet our condition. Uh, if we take, uh, for example, one billion rows, that uh, table it will result in uh, really huge number of comparisons. Um, we can avoid. Uh, uh, we can. Uh, what actually we can do to avoid additional uh, comparisons between geometries, um, especially if we are dealing with complex polygons or line strings. Um, the technique which improves our approach is named special index. Uh, index structure is frequently used to, to reduce search times in large uh, databases and also in uh, case of Apache Sedona uh, in distributed system. Uh, there are many special indexes used with geospatial data to reduce search times. Uh, free widely used is geospatial uh, in geospatial community are R3, KD3, uh, and Quad3. Uh, in the case of R3, uh, we have to construct minimum boundary envelopes uh, around the geometries. Um, some minimum boundary envelopes can be merged into bigger ones. Um, then the next level in the tree will be created, uh, which also results in the last number of uh, comparisons. Um, a search using R3 uh, index can quickly uh, descend the tree to find objects uh, in the general area of interest and then perform uh, more exa exact tests uh, on the objects themselves. Uh, An R3 index can improve performance because it eliminates the need to examine objects outside the area of interest. Um, without an R3 index, a query would need to evalu evaluate every object um, to find those uh, uh, that match the query criteria. Um, as a root, we treat a largest area. At the second level contains merged minimum boundary envelopes and third primi primarily created ones called minimum boundary rectangles. Uh, to sum up, we can distinguish few properties of R3. Consists of single root, internal nodes, and leaf nodes. Um, root contains the pointer to the largest region in the special domain. Uh, parent nodes containing pointers to their child nodes. Uh, where region of child nodes completely overlaps the regions uh, of parent nodes. Um, special indexes are widely used in databases such as PostgreSQL with extension of uh, PostGIS, but uh, what can we do to scale geospatial queries and distribute it across ma multiple machines? Uh, with the help of special partitioning, we can map our partitions based on the location domain. Uh, we represent the partitions as special objects, which can be, uh, which can consist of our geometries. Uh, if geometry intersects with more than one partition area, we have to include in both of them. Uh, for complex, uh, uh, for complex uh, geometries, uh, the idea about special partitioning remains uh, remains the same. Uh, we define partitions for each geometry and based on that split uh, the data across the machines. Um, Special indexes uh, can um, drastically reduce the, the complexity. Uh, special partitioning allows for parallel execution of the query. Um, and the third optimization is to reduce uh, the memory uh, footprint of our query. Um, special object uh, serialization, uh, which aims to reduce the complexity, uh, which aims to, to represent uh, geometric objects, as an array of bytes, which leads to decreased memory usage during the computation uh, process. Um, and what if mentioned before optimizations and many other geospatial capabilities uh, are available using one library? 
a simple SQL query or Python code to describe complex geospatial problems. Uh, furthermore, previously explained problem can be written in a few lines of code. Uh, for example, using Python syntax, we can write a data frame alias left join data frame alias right with expression as the distance between left geometry and right geometry is less than 150 meters. Or using SQL query, uh, select left geom, left ID, right geom, right ID uh, from left and uh, right table where as the distance between those geometries uh, is less than 150 uh, meters. Uh, simple as that. Mm, and to, here we have an a, a Apache Sedona. Uh, the Apache Sedona, a cluster computing system for processing large scale uh, spatial data. It extends Apache Spark with set of out of the box special resilient uh, distributed data sets uh, that efficiently load, process, and analyze large scale spatial data uh, across the machines. Um, low level um, abstraction provided from Apache Sedona is Python RDD, Polygon RDD, Special RDD, and Lightstring RDD. Based on that abstraction, we can perform operations such as, uh, in, of course, and in the distributed uh, manner, special range query, special KNN query, and special join query. Um, on top of that, we have data frames with geometry data types, uh, which use special RDDs underneath. Um, Apache Sedona core is mainly written in Java and Scala. Uh, we have wrappers to, to Python R. Uh, performance of, of Apache Sedona is based on three main uh, elements, which are special partitioning, special indexing, uh, object serialization, and uh, index uh, serialization. Uh, Apache Sedona allows for optimal uh, data distribution in such a way that um, data that is close to each other is also in the same partition. Additionally, the partitioning has been uh, implemented in that manner uh, that the number of objects is similar in different partitions based on data distribution. Uh, Apache Sedona um, provides the ability to use KDP tree, quad tree, R3 as a special uh, partitioning uh, method. Um, Apache Sedona uses two kinds of indexes at the moment. Uh, global, which is um, created on driver during the uh, special partitioning uh, process. Uh, the main goal of that index is to prune partitions uh, which are empty. And we also have local index uh, created uh, within partition uh, to reduce the number of comparisons, uh, the, the complexity of the query. Um, Python API all allows you to use all implemented indexes uh, in Apache Sedona. Uh, it is RG and, and Quad3 at, at the moment. Um, Apache Sedona implements a uh, dedicated object serialization to reduce memory impact on geospatial data processing. Based on that Spark uh, config option, uh, WKB serializa serialization can be chosen or shape serialization. Um, Apache Sedona implements almost uh, 60 SQL functions. All of them you can use within Python API, including um, including ST distance, ST geom from text, ST buffer, um, ST dumps, ST intersects, uh, and so on. Uh, after a release of the new version, all additional functions also are available for Python users. You need to register those functions using uh, the Sedona registrator class. Um, to sum up, uh, Apache Sedona stands out with three major points, uh, high speed, according to our benchmarks uh, and uh, third party. Uh, it runs two to 10 uh, times faster than other uh, Spark-based geospatial data systems. Um, next point is low memory consumption, which reduces amount of memory needed to get the, the result. Uh, Python API is also easy to use. You can uh, use simple SQL queries or simple uh, Python code to descri describe complex uh, geospatial problems. Uh, also, it is well integrated with other geospatial libraries and systems such as GeoPandas, Shapely, and PostGIS. Um, 
Spatial Resilient Distributed Data Set, SRDD, is a fundamental data structure of Apache Sedona. A Python API gives you an abstraction over that by holding the uh, reference to the JVM uh, object representing, uh, representing special RDD. Uh, Python uh, special RDD uses that reference with help of Py4j to bring you all RDD API capabilities such as joint query, range query, KNN query. Uh, wisely used, it can be transformed into a data frame with just special uh, data type or saved uh, on the disk um, without any serialization to Python. Uh, Spark Python AD RDD uh, API is constructed that way uh, so that all objects from JVM are translated to Python equivalent. Uh, to avoid the double serialization, Sedona Python API also has implemented top uh, level classes, which still holds the reference to RDD geometry instead of PySpark RDD uh, of type uh, shaped geometry uh, to bring you the best performance possible. If you save your data after special join uh, on the uh, disk, you can uh, or you transform it to the special data frame, uh, you can use dedicated objects to do so. Uh, long story short, you have the same uh, performance with Python flexibility. Um, crucial element of each special data processing is to reduce number of comparisons between geometries. And for Python users also with special RDD API, uh, special indexes and uh, uh, are available and special partitioning, and you can choose which one to use with your query. Um, Sedona extends Apache Spark data frame with geometry UDT data type, which is connected to uh, geometry type on the Python API side. Uh, Python API deserialized geo JVM geometry uh, objects uh, from Apache Sedona core to, to shapey based geometry objects. Uh, with use of Spark, create data frame method, uh, transform, for example, GeoPandas GeoData frame directly to Sedona Geospatial data frame. No additional um, boilerplate is required. Uh, it's simple as that. Um, Sedona special data uh, frame can be uh, also simply transformed to, to GeoPandas data frame. Uh, of course, do not overuse this functionality. Uh, data is stored and processed uh, on the driver. If it does not fit in memory, it can end up with memory issues. Um, Underneath Python data frame is JVM data frame reference. Uh, Py4j helps to translate objects from uh, JVM to, to Python. Um, speed of uh, Sedona Python API special uh, data frame is almost the same as the Java uh, Scala equivalent because we keep the, the reference to the uh, JVM uh, data frame uh, and we use Py4j just like, like a wrapper. Um, all SQL functions also are available uh, for Python users, uh, ge uh, including geometry transformation functions, predicate functions, aggregate functions, and so on. Um, to install Apache Sedona, uh, you can download uh, a zip file directly from PyPy repositories, I'll, or install it uh, via pip uh, uh, package manager or uh, packaging tools such as pip or poetry. Um, to be able to communicate via Py4j with Spark session, um, additional jars have to be provided. It can be done in two ways. Um, you can use Spark packages, Spark jar packages option uh, with, uh, within the Spark config and pass the uh, Sedona Python adapter with uh, GeoTools using an appropriate uh, version. Uh, or by adding Sedona Python adapter and GeoTools directly to your Spark jars uh, location, uh, Spark home, of course. Um, Python API uh, uh, originally has been released on autumn 2019 as an external repository. It had a data frame API included only on February 2020 with version to uh, 1.3.0. Uh, formerly GeoSpark uh, back then. Uh, Python API brought also RDD API. Uh, since then, uh, since then um, Apache, uh, Sedona, Python uh, provide all RDD and uh, data frame API function functionality. Um, 
Python API beneath uses shapely objects. Uh, when you collect the data uh, or transform it to the pandas, uh, which helps with easy transformation and integration with popular Python libraries, such as GeoPandas, Folium, Shapely, or uh, Matplotlib. Uh, Python API includes all possible geospatial data formats uh, readers provided by uh, Apache Sedona Core native API. Uh, you can read the data from GeoJSON, uh, Shapefile, WKT, uh, WKB, uh, also from Parquet or PostGIS. Uh, also, due to the integration with uh, Shapey, you can use other external libraries um, to load the data, like Fiona or GeoPandas, uh, and next transform it to the geospatial data frame or special uh, RTD. Um, special broadcast join is also available for Python users when your data on the left side uh, of the join uh, is huge and uh, on the right side is small enough, you can use a broadcast join. Uh, the small part of the uh, data is copied on machines and uh, available for all of them. Uh, the left side of the join, which in many cases is huge, uh, is specially, specially partitioned. Um, special broadcast join help you to avoid special partitioning on the one side of the join. Uh, one side of the join has to be small enough, as I said uh, previously. Uh, Turn on special broadcast join using broadcast function from PySpark SQL functions. Uh, uh, it can improve query performance and make a job more stable. Um, and some performance uh, advices. Um, uh, to tune your application, uh, start from increasing number of partitions when application is uh, running slowly. Uh, remember to use dedicated uh, serializers uh, instead of default ones. Uh, avoid collecting to, to GeoPandas uh, only if it is uh, 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 only if it is necessary. Uh, use range query row and uh, join query row to, to avoid additional serialization uh, if the result of the special join is used to create a data frame and uh, trace transformation on them. Uh, persist RDD and data frame, which you often use, um, and use special indexes to reduce the number uh, of comparisons during the, the, the special uh, query. Um, and let me switch to the notebook example, uh, which I created. Maybe I should switch to the. Okay, so. Uh, First of all, uh, let's uh, briefly discuss the imports. Um, there are uh, a lot of them, uh, as you can see, uh, but uh, only a few of them actually are crucial to use Apache Sedona incubating. Uh, first and most significant is the Sedona uh, registrator. It enables data frame, SQL, and RDD API for Python users. Um, uh, Sedona has a suite of well-written geometry and index serializers. Um, uh, forgetting to enable Sedona uh, Creo Registrator and uh, also uh, Creo Serializer classes uh, can lead to, to high memory consumption. Uh, geometry type helps you to specify your data uh, frame uh, schema. Um, KN query is an abstraction over Sedona KN query, uh, which takes as input uh, a K, which means the number of geometries, a query point, and a special RDD. Uh, and it finds uh, the, the K geometries in the uh, RDD. A joint query is an abstraction uh, over the Sedona joint query, a Scala Java version. Um, range query is also uh, the equivalent of Apache Sedona core range query. Uh, WKP reader, WKT reader, GeoJSON reader, and shapefile reader allows you to read the data from WKB, WKT, uh, GeoJSON, and shapefile uh, accordingly. Um, to run uh, uh, Python API, um, we need two additional jars to, to, to actually make that uh, uh, possible. First is an adapter, and the second one is the GeoTools package with an appropriate uh, version. 
Uh, as an addition, PostgreSQL driver is included because later on I will show you an example how to read the data directly from the PostgreSQL uh, database with the extension, with the PostGIS extension. Um, um, also, we need to, to use uh, a Sedona registrator, regist register all to auth geospatial functionalities uh, brought to you by Apache Sedona. Um, now, note that it is essential actually to, to, to both of APIs, uh, so for RDD and the data frame API also. Um, we have to remember to, to add Spark JAR packages if we did not include that in the Spark Home JARs packages. Uh, and we also can add Spark Serializer and Creo Serializer, uh, Creo Registrator. Uh, options to, to, to decrease the, the memory impact of our uh, queries. Um, uh, almost uh, every geospatial query starts from, from reading the data from external sources. Uh, Apache Sedona uh, Python API has readers for most popular geospatial data formats, such, such as shapefile reader, uh, read it to geometry RDD, it returns uh, the special RDD. Um, the special RDD returned uh, has raw special RDD R uh, attribute, uh, which holds the reference to Python RDD of type uh, shapely based geometry. Uh, so methods like uh, mapping or filtering on that uh, uh, RDD is uh, available, um, as you can see on that. Uh, Example, I should be also be able to, to run them right now. Uh, but if any functions are built in the data frame exist, I encourage you to use uh, that function instead of uh, mapping through the uh, special uh, RDDs, uh, raw special RDD uh, attribute. Uh, we can also convert our uh, data frame using uh, our uh, special RDD using uh, adapter class. Uh, as you can see on the example, I'm uh, passing the uh, Mazovia buildings, which is a special RDD, and create uh, a, a data frame based on uh, that uh, special RDD. Um, to read the data from GeoJSON, uh, we can use the GeoJSON reader class with method read to geometry RDD. Uh, similar to previous example, it returns special RDD, which can be uh, transformed also to uh, to data frame using adapter class. Um, to read the data from WKT, you can uh, use WKT reader or use uh, uh, data frame API and uh, uh, SQL functions STG on from WKT. Um, to read the data from WKB, you can uh, use also dedicated uh, dedicated uh, class, uh, WKB reader, read to geometry RDD, uh, or directly using a data frame API, as you can see on the example uh, below. Uh, currently, we don't have uh, implicit uh, conversion while reading the data from PostGIS. But actually, you can uh, use a connector uh, provided by a Spark API. Uh, and uh, based on the uh, data which you receive from the PostgreSQL, you can run a STG from WKB function, uh, which converts the data from PostgreSQL uh, with the PostGIS extension directly to geospatial data frame provided by Apache Sedona, as you can see on that example. Uh, I can print the, the, the schema of the uh, data frame, and uh, it should have uh, it should uh, has a um, geometry uh, data type. Um, as base uh, geometry representation, Python API uses shapely based geometry objects. Uh, due to that fact, you can use Spark Create Data Frame to create special data frame based on GeoPandas data frame and create GeoPandas data frame based on a special data frame with two pandas uh, method, as you can see on the example below. Uh, we can provide schema, but it is not uh, required. Uh, it should be uh, implicitly, uh, it, uh, it should uh, 
uh, implicitly figure it out um, that our uh, type of geometry is uh, uh, geometry UDT. Um, we can also uh, visualize with other libraries like uh, uh, Folium. Um, when we want to visualize our data, um, for example, if we want to validate future workloads and uh, special joins, uh, we can use a Folium library. And the only one thing we should do is uh, uh, convert our uh, special data frame to GeoPandas data frame, and we are good to go to, to, to show the uh, result on the plot. Now, the same steps we can follow uh, using the Matplotlib library. Um, and let's go to the uh, special join examples. Um, in that section, we use two data sets, uh, popular Kaggle, Kaggle taxi trip duration data set. Uh, data set is one released by the New York City taxi and uh, limousine commission which includes pickup time, geo-coordinates, uh, number of passengers, and several other uh, variables. Second one includes road shapes from the OS, uh, OpenStreetMap project. Um, our goal is to write solution for two problems using uh, Sedona Data Frame API and uh, next uh, using RDD API. Uh, first one is to find most popular pickup and drop-off uh, drop uh, roads between 1st of January 2016 and uh, 5th of January 2016 in the Manhattan area. Uh, second is to create visualization based on passenger count within the grid. Um, to do so, we need to filter our data uh, to the date range uh, specified in the requirements. Uh, our data needs uh, some preprocessing, for instance, selecting uh, columns and melting it to the long format. Uh, with help of union by name and select method uh, from Spark uh, from Spark uh, API, uh, we can achieve that. Uh, we can use uh, ST point uh, to create a geometry uh, column. Um, to avoid additional computation, um, I also defined a polygon representing the Manhattan area and uh, using uh, my range query, special range query uh, function to, to clip our data to desired uh, uh, area. So the computation will be not that complex. Uh, we can, for example, run that uh, cell. Um, oh, it's ended. Uh, in that solution, we assume that road has uh, two meters, uh, 10 meters uh, width, uh, and uh, our solution join can be written as follows, as you can see on that example. Uh, we can use routes uh, data frame uh, and uh, data frame representing uh, taxi drop off and uh, pickup points, uh, and based on the um, uh, predicate as the distance uh, between geometry and row geometry, which is less than 10 meters, we can uh, join our data sets. Um, first of all, maybe I will also show the extended uh, plan, which should be also available here. Uh, as you can see, um, we have distance joined as an extent that uh, physical plan uh, provided by uh, Apache Sedona API. Um, uh, the second problem, uh, preprocess data, which we uh, previously created, we can use on, on our slash solution. Uh, and also we have a grid uh, representing the Manhattan uh, area. Um, we can write a special join, uh, which we have uh, on the, uh, in, the, in the cell. Uh, we can write grid Sedona, which represented the uh, grid uh, previously shown. As you can see, I uh, transformed that grid created as a, a list of uh, shaped objects into the special data frame, uh, Sedona special data frame. Uh, and uh, with use of the uh, uh, special join uh, and, and as the intersects uh, 
condition, I can uh, count the number of uh, some of uh, the passengers uh, in the uh, grid using uh, data frame API. Uh, and based on that, I can create, uh, I created a, a plot uh, using volume library. Um, Sedona Special RTD API is faster than data frame API. Python API Special RTD API also. Uh, we pick second problem and solve it using Python Special RTD abstraction. Uh, so starting from merged, merged data uh, frame. Just to let you know, you've got about four or five minutes left. OK, it's uh, almost uh, finished. Great. Um, uh, we have to somehow convert the list of shapely objects to, to special RTD. We can use uh, uh, adapter for that. Uh, and also, um, we can perform the, the, the special join using, uh, uh, using uh, um, RDD API. Uh, I use join query route to, to avoid uh, additional serialization between the Python and JVM. Um, and also created a visualization based on that. And that the last one, uh, the last point, which I also want to, to show you is the special broadcast join, which is also available for Python users. Uh, but you have to, to, to uh, explicitly use broadcast function to, to, to broadcast your data across the, the machines. And I think that's everything which I, what I created, but what I prepared for, for today. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for those uh, listening in, we've got time for a few questions uh, since I don't see anything in chat. Um, I think maybe what I'd like to ask is, uh, are there a few things that you're looking at for upcoming uh, releases in Sedona that you guys are working on? Um, actually, I don't uh, know. Uh, but uh, probably we should uh, focus on the, the, the uh, more uh, post-GIS uh, fun equivalent functions. And we have also some plans, but I don't know if I can share with you right now, maybe later on. OK, yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, no, it's it's been interesting to watch the project. And like I said, the, the Python integration uh, is is kind of the is one of the big uh, killer features that I see in Sedona. Um, because from, uh, you know, trying to do that in GeoMesa, it was it was definitely a fair bit of work. So uh, good job on supporting that and uh, supporting your users in Gitter. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, George, if you've got any questions, feel free to uh, chime in. Uh, I've, I've got the benefit of uh, having a good idea of what Sedona is about. And so that's why it's kind of hard for me to ask questions. Uh, Let's see. Um, sure. If um, you know, we harken back to the presentation earlier by Peter Bauman that contrasted array databases with um, you know X array with um, MapReduce and the like. Um, so here now we've got Sedona uh, based on Spark, um, and and so what's the uh, the best use case? Why you know why choose um, Sedona versus say an array database? What would be the um, uh, the driver for your suggestion that we that a, an implementer would choose Sedona. Oh, it's a tough question. Uh, probably it, it depends on the on the use case, uh, but Absolutely. I think that the, the main advantage uh, for Sedona right now is that uh, Spark is uh, a really popular uh, processing engine uh, for big data. Uh, and also Apache Sedona uh, scales uh, up well on the uh, huge workloads and geospatial processing. But I'm not quite sure how uh, I can compare uh, to the other systems. Well, it helps. I agree. It's use case based. Thanks. Good presentation. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Um, I would also say if folks are looking for more information about uh, Sedona, uh, Gitter is where I've seen a lot of uh, discussion. There's also a mailing list for Sedona. Are there other ways we should be getting uh, in touch with you? Uh, could you repeat? Because I 
That's oh, sure. I, I was just, I was going to, uh, you know, try to let people know how to get in touch with you. But actually, someone just asked a question in chat that says, uh, other than installing libs and notebooks, is there anything they need uh, to run Sedona on Spark? And uh, I think your documentation says a fair bit about that, but you should uh, take the question, not me. <laughs> yes. Um, so actually, you need uh, uh, set on Spark. Actually, you need only two jars. You can provide them by uh, uh, Spark uh, config, as I uh, showed on the examples, or just uh, copy the jars to the Spark home uh, jars location. So only thing, and uh, of course, install the, the, the package from PyPy, PyPy repositories. All right, cool. Uh, and thanks. also, you can reach me after on the guitar um, and ask any question related to. And there was a quick follow up question Do you mean that you need to install things on each Spark? Yes, yes it, yeah. it should be installed on all nodes. 